welcome to the channel guys this is the first video thanks for tuning in uh, it's your host Angel here and we're gonna go over something I just picked up at my local FFL it is the Rock Island FSHC TAC Ultra it's a double stack 9 mil 17 round magazine capacity and it's a beast. First thing we're gonna do, go ahead and clear it out. Clear. Alrighty. First things first, it is a, the finish is it, both, the both slide and frame. It's parkerized, both are steel. Uh, the frame is uh, steel frame, so it is pretty heavy. Um, I believe on the website it says that it weighs about somewhere between two and a half to three and a half pounds unloaded. It's a very beefy boy. Um, the full length five inch barrel, full length guide rod, full dust cover with this nice Picatinny rail on it, which I love. That's probably my favorite thing about it. Um, Another thing, the sights, the front sight is fiber optic, and then as well as an adjustable rear sight, which I also like. Um, I don't know, let's see if you guys get it. It's pretty nice. Um, not a fan of the white dots. Uh, I might, I'm not sure if I wanna switch them out or just take like a tactical Sharpie and <laughs> color them in. Um, but the fiber optic sights is definitely something I really do enjoy, especially on something that comes with the gun. Um, one complaint I have is that the fiber optic, it is bright, but it isn't as bright as it should be. I don't know if you can see, it's very, it's kind of orange versus that really bright red. Um, a lot of people have been, or have been reading online, a lot of people have been saying that the oil that they come with if you know anything about rock islands uh, they smother their guns with oil and it that oil fades the fiber optic um to make it this orange color versus that like a dawson where it's like that bright red color either way it's still still noticeable it's not faded uh, as bad where you can't use it at all still usable i like it don't have a problem with it um the Next thing is the safety. Uh, it's a single action trigger. Uh, so the safety, once it's cocked, just lock it up here. It is an ambi safety, one on both sides. Um, a lot of people said that this, the, the uh, righty side, uh, when they have a grip on the pistol, a lot of times their thumb or finger will get in the way. I don't have a problem with it too much. I actually enjoy the ambi safety. On both sides it hasn't really bothered me at all I have no problem switching it on and off um, the other safety there's two safeties on this there's the the manual safety and then there's the the beaver tail safety or the handguard safety which a lot of 1911s like the cheaper actually cheaper rock islands and just other 1911s it has a hard time going off when you're actually gripping it and activating that safety so you can actually pull the trigger when it when you want to fire but I haven't had any issues with it uh, I've shot roughly probably 700 rounds through this thing I've had no issues with stoppages or any safety issues or flipping an arm while I'm trying to shoot I had no issues with pretty much anything really another thing uh, skeletonized hammer as well as skeletonized trigger which I love, and while we're at the trigger, um, the trigger pull on the website, it says somewhere around um, the four to six pound pull, uh, which is actually really nice um, for a stock trigger like this. Let's see, I'll show you guys the, so once you pull the trigger, there is very little take up to get to that wall. Slowly get to the wall and then pull. Set. Very nice trigger pull. Um, 
Another thing is the grips, their G10 grips. Uh, a lot of people, or some people have been saying that the grips kind of kind of suck, where they're not very grippy, uh, or they're just not as defined as people want them to be. Uh, I don't have a problem with them, to be honest. They're really nice. I, my, I got pretty big hands and they get a little clammy sometimes, so I haven't had an issue where it's my hand slipping or I have issue with holding the pistol while I'm firing. Uh, the grips to me are the first stock grips especially, they're perfectly fine. Um, the biggest complaint about this pistol though is the the grip in general, not just these, just the, the size of it overall. Um, it is pretty thick. For people with smaller hands, I can see why a lot of people would dislike this, where you're, you know, you have a smaller hand, it's gonna be a little harder to grip and actually engage the safety. Now that I can see, I got big hands like I was saying, so I don't have an issue with uh, gripping this even with one hand. As you can see, I'm pretty pretty good with that. And then when you get your second hand in there, it's pretty secure in my hands. Um, so for me, this is like perfect. Um, Flared Magwell, love this. This is, other than the, um, the rail, this is probably my favorite feature about it. Uh, it makes it getting that mag, which is super easy to snap in. No problem. It's a metal mag too, so you know, get it in there and then when you engage that magazine release, it comes right out. No problem, you don't have to, you know, pull it out with your hand or anything like that. It sits in there, once it's out, it slides right out. No problem. Super quick, really good. Basically made for competition. That's pretty much what this is for. Um, good budget friendly gun right out of the box for competition. This pistol ranges in the sub 1000 range, um, depending on where you get it. I got a pretty good deal on it. Um, it's a phenomenal pistol for what it is. Uh, one complaint I have is it only comes with this one mag, which it's a 17 plus one, but I've noticed, and a lot of other people also say, uh, I'm not sure why they keep saying it's 17 plus one, because you can actually fit 18 in this uh, with 19 in the chamber. So I guess you can fit one more round in. Uh, I usually always fit 18 in there. I don't have a problem. The other thing is, since it only comes with this one mag, they're super expensive to get uh, the factory magazine for this pistol. Um, I've seen people use STI mags for this, uh, same with like the, the Remington R1 mags, but the same thing with these mags, they're really hard to come by or they're really expensive. So that's probably the biggest complaint overall about this gun, um, just the magazines, because you're not, if you're gonna buy this, um, I would, if you, can pick up these while you're purchasing it or in before you even buy it buy a bunch of these mags if you're you know set on absolutely buying this that's the only biggest complaint i have um that pretty much does it for this pistol overall um i'm a huge fan of it uh i have no problem shooting it um i'm gonna put some footage in here of me shooting it on the range Usually I shoot with this thing because it's a steel frame, it's so damn heavy. Um, shooting nine mil out of this thing, it's super accurate. I usually shoot at the uh, 10 to 15 yards and even then I'm still hitting pretty pretty decent sized grouping, like one to two inches and it shoots flawlessly. No stoppages, no issues. It's overall probably my favorite gun I've ever shot. Um, sights, great. Probably switch these out for Dawson sides eventually. I haven't decided if I want to mill it out and get an optic on it. I think I'm just going to keep the iron sights on for now. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the sights. And this is also, like uh, like I said before, around the sub 1000. But uh, most guns compared to this are like STI or Triarch, where both all those companies starting off, you're looking at somewhere starting off in like the 2,500 and it only goes up from there. I've seen some go up to almost $10,000. Uh, this thing is a third of that price. So for, if you're trying to get into competition or just extensive range uses, this is definitely the one. Um, 
especially if you're a 1911 guy, this is definitely something that if you show your other buddies on the range that they're they're going to be jealous because it's pretty much your modern 1911. Um, that's pretty pretty much it for the review. Um, if you guys have any questions or uh, any, I guess, uh, input that you want to let me know in the comments or concerns, anything that I missed, or you'd like me to go over in a different video or anything like that, uh, much appreciated. Uh, thanks a lot, guys.